There's a very strange cancel culture going on amongst the Western animation industry. The cancel culture goes in the form of animator who did X has drawn cartoon rule 24 in the past and therefore they should be cancelled. Is that so, internet puritans? Because that's the portfolio of a lot of manga artists these days. Is there anything wrong with artists working in the Western animation industry, having a history of drawing whatever rule 24s of whatever cartoon characters in the past? I don't think so, but this cancel culture has taught me that Puritans and Moral Guardians will cancel people for this horrible sin. All because of those poor innocent souls and little children on the internet. But before we get into this dumb cancel culture hoopla, YouTube will demonetize this video because I talk about them rule 34. So thank you all for supporting me on this channel, you can do so by checking the links down below. Also huge thanks to Herschel for the pledge on Patreon and Dimian Wu for the pledge on subscribe star. You guys are fantastic. Let's use this article from CBR as a framework for this conversation. Cartoon fandom has a Puritan problem, and they are pretty much correct. The article starts off by talking about a hoopla linking to a Twitter thread summarizing it. It's from a cartoon called Amphibia, where the storyboard artist Hana Ayubi posting the art of two characters in the show in a romantic context because they are blushing. The female character Sasha is revealed to be 13 years old, while while the toad is definitely an adult. Not exactly the most comfortable insinuation, but at the end of the day, it's just drawings on the internet. There's really nothing wrong with this in my opinion. But the aforementioned account went on to reply to some of the most common criticisms. The first one is that the storyboard artist Hannah didn't mean for it to be romantic. However, Hannah replied to a more overtly romantic art, endorsing it, which sort of indirectly means that she's endorsing the ship. Even the artist of this particular art says, throw me in the jail I guess, being completely self-aware that this isn't exactly a family-friendly ship. The second reply is how Hannah envisioned him as an edgy teenager, and the reply is basically saying no, other characters are shown to be proper adults in the universe and proper kids in the universe. The third reply is where the Puritan mindset comes in. I think, well, he's a cartoon toad man so does it really matter, is a good point to bring up. But the Twitter account replied by asking you guys if you're comfortable with it. I'm personally not comfortable with it, but they're just drawings on the internet. I shouldn't make a 10 minute plus video talking about how people are mad about- oh wait, I did. That video was really bad in retrospect. But regardless, these are not excuses to cancel someone or fire someone. At least Hannah didn't post Rule 34 of it, it's just her preferred ship. Are we seriously going to cancel people because of ships? Apparently we are, because the creator ships two cartoon characters made for children who are not on their appropriate age. Let's ignore that these people have talent in drawing these characters. We should punish them because they have their own fantasies. The primary concern for this entire thing is so that young artists who follow the content creators in social media aren't exposed to gross or problematic content. Okay, there are two points that I'd like to bring up. One, young artists shouldn't be in social media in general if they don't want to be exposed with gross content, and two, if they are in social media in general, they probably are already exposed to gross content, or help, maybe they are even aware that there will be gross content in social media. This cancel culture is relying on you canceling someone because you find the content gross and you want to protect children in social media who were probably already exposed to these sorts of content to begin with. Hannah then apologized to everyone, well, sort of. She's pretty much doubling down on the fact that she's drawing something cute, and people are interpreting it way too far. She even said that they're cartoon frogs, so the age isn't really an issue. And she's right, this shouldn't be an issue at all, but these moral guardians want to protect those children on the internet who uses social media and expose themselves to gross imagery. The thread continues by providing images of the artist, summarizing the complaints that she got. The Undertale gag comic makes her a pedophile, the gender swaps make her transphobic, and her ships make her an all-around awful person. Those are just some of the examples in the complaints that she got from her art, or her activities in general actually. The next tweet is pretty much obviously a joke, and the next image is an Undertale comic made by Hannah where the punchline is Frisk unbuttoning Toriel's bra. This entire thing only tells me that the cancel culture is being started by people who make wild interpretations and being unable to comprehend jokes. 
just the run-of-the-mill moral guardian behavior. I absolutely love this one too. Here's a tweet from Hannah talking about the Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask kissing, and she laughed at some Tumblr refugees who complained that they're 14. That's both correct and hypocritical for those Tumblr refugees. So what's the reaction of the Twitter account that contributed to this cancel culture? It's weird that she called herself a pervert if she said that her drawing is meant to be harmless implying that she has lewd intentions, and that's bad because protect the children, am I right? So that's the Twitter thread from someone who has pronouns in a bio, which is to be expected from these cancel culture warriors. Going back to the CBR article, the article mainly talks about how the cancel culture towards these cartoonists and animators required them to maintain their online presence as something more G-rated or family-friendly. I can kind of see where the complaint is coming from. I mean, I don't want to follow someone who says that they're the artist of Cartoon X and suddenly they post anime titties in the timeline. Actually, I would follow that, but the parents won't be happy. I'd say that if you work on a certain popular animated show, you can post whatever you want in your social media, or at least warn people, hey, this account posts not safe for work content, and if you follow this, you will see something that might ruin your childhood. That or make an alternative account where you post your not safe for work content. It's good to have an alternative account when Twitter or any other social media will ban you for the dumbest of reasons. By the way, follow me at my new Twitter, same name but with a 451 in the end. The article cited a Medium post detailing about pretty much how the entire cartoon industry is whittled with people either knowingly supporting Cartoon Rule 34 or not knowingly supporting Cartoon Rule 34. The article even cited Zone, yes, that Zone, for being hired to make cartoons like OKKO. OK this caused quite a bit of hoopla on Twitter where this user pointed that out before deleting the tweet and saying that he or she got death threats. Typical Twitter nonsense. A highlight on the article states, the attempt to place responsibility for kids online safely solely on the shoulder of the parents doesn't make sense anymore and is often a deflection tactic to defend callous corporate practices. That's true if we're talking about something like loot boxes where parents are completely unaware that their children has been spending way too much money on stuff. But we're talking about creators of cartoons who are adults indulging in their not safe for work desires. Kids will see problematic content on the internet all the time. Even if you tell these cartoon creators, hey, don't post not safe for work things on your timeline, they will still be exposed to even more stuff. And it's not like YouTube's Elsa and Spider-Man videos where they are intended for children. I believe that a lot of the things mentioned in the article, like the Pony Rule 34s and Inflation Fetish, are meant for adults. The panic comes because these shows are meant for kids, and when kids try to google them or something, they might find these horrendous fetish rule 34s. Unfortunately, the one thing that I know for sure is that the internet is the horniest freaking place in the existence of this world. People are going to post rule 34s of anything, and kids will be exposed to them. I don't know what the best solution is, but I can tell you for sure that it's easier to tell individual kids, hey, don't go to these sites, than telling adults to stop making rule 34s. The writer said that it's an outdated view telling kids to not look at not safe for work pictures online. Yeah, just because you call it outdated doesn't mean it doesn't work. The writer then compared the act of fans or cartoon creators indulging in their not safe for work desires as them pinning not safe for work pictures to the walls outside a McDonald's ball pit and yelling, don't look. That's a terrible comparison. The McDonald's ball pit in this simile is supposed to be the product, right? Has there ever been an instance where cartoon creators put their not safe for work desires in their products? Am I the only one who feels like this is something that Mark Twain talked about? Censorship is telling a man he can't have a steak just because a baby can't chew it. You're telling pretty much a lot of adults who have not safe for work desires to not do it on the internet because children might see it. The writer then asks a couple more questions. Is it really harmless fun when kids stumble across lolicon artwork of their favorite cartoon characters, characters they see themselves in? Is the internet really better off when tens of millions of kids watch fetish animations by Secret Goomba Man 12345 that show Steven Universe, My Little Pony, and Gravity Falls characters inflating like blimps and bursting? I think you're overcomplicating this issue, so let me simplify the questions. Is it good when kids see Cartoon Rule 24 on the internet? 
Of course not. So what's the solution? Prevent adults from indulging in their desires, like the Mark Twain quote? Asking corporations to copy strike these adult content? Hey, I was joking on that part! But the writer was being serious on that one. I am pretty sure Rule 34 falls under parody, and therefore fair use. Let's not go into the rabbit hole of whether or not fan arts are legal. That's an entirely different conversation that we'd be having. And the final question that was being asked is, would the world truly be a worse place if Derpy Boru didn't have a full con section? Replace this question with literally any fetish that anyone would find uncomfortable. The world will be a better place for you, but not for those who enjoy these content. I am no fan of the more obscure fetish arts out there, but would I advocate for the censorship of those just because I find it uncomfortable? No, let adults do whatever activities they want, as long as it doesn't involve actual real-life children. Yes, I know actual real-life children browse the internet, but telling adults to stop their not safer work desires instead of parenting children and how to use the internet properly is not exactly an effective solution. Going back to the CBR article, the writer shares my sentiment in that the Medium article makes a few justified points before going on into false equivalencies. The writer then cited many famous creators who have drawn or did a lot of erotic works in the past. There's even an entire section on TV troops called Bleach Underpants. There are many examples of people in the industry, including people like Osamu Tezuka, making H animes and drawing furry Rule 35 force when his daughter went to his work desk and also drawing for the Japanese Communist Party. He's really weird. But the CBR article ends in a really interesting note. It feels like no coincidence that the creators, both professionals and in fan communities, most virulently targeted and often harassed by the fandom puritans tend to be women and or minorities. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh no! For example, Rebecca Sugar, the creator of Steven Universe, who drew Yaoi Rule 34s of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, is non binary. Ian Jones Quarty, her partner, is black. Hannah Ayubi, the storyboard artist on Amphibia, is an Arab American woman. You see where I'm going with this? Now, I would say that the race or the sexual identity of these people are absolutely irrelevant, but these are the Puritans who make them relevant. These are coming from people who make such a huge fuss about representation in the animation industry. We want less straight white males and more women and minorities, but not when those women and minorities are drawing or participating in not safe for work content that I personally don't like. This is something that happened a lot of times. In my stream, I talk about this um, individual who criticized a game for making a certain character look 12. The problem is, the character doesn't look 12, the character isn't even created by her, and the designer of the new character is a woman. On the same stream, there's also this person who made a fuss about a comic cover made by a woman. To sum up, this cancel culture is stemming from people who are so overprotective and so caring of children that they're going to do whatever it takes to prevent adults from indulging in their not safe for work desires just because children might see it. People went on so far as to harass the artists and telling them that they shouldn't indulge in their fantasies or even asking corporations to copy strike content creators who make not safe for work content that they don't like. Let's go back to the simple philosophical questions. Is it bad that children are exposed to not safe for work content on the internet? And if so, how do you make children so that they're not exposed to not safe for work content on the internet? I mean, it's the internet, people are going to use it in the most unpredictable ways, and children are going to have their childhood ruined, like that time where I was browsing not safe for work websites in middle school, and I saw Spongebob getting sucked at by Ariel from Little Mermaid. Well, at least I turned up okay, for the most part.